Sunday, Igoho arrested in Kotonu. And an assassination attempt at the interim leader of Mali. And off the press very soon with our guest. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this bright and beautiful Wednesday, the 21st of July, 2021. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. Welcome to The Breakfast this morning. It's the second uh, day of public holidays across Nigeria. And we would uh, say happy Salah once again to all mm -hmm. the Muslim faithful and everyone across the country um, enjoying these uh, two days of rest and celebration. Indeed. And uh, let's go straight into our top trending story. I am very excited for this one because we've been talking in recent time regarding sports and the sports in focus has been basketball and about how Nigerians in diaspora have been doing us proud with mm. all their achievements. Now, the person in focus today is Giannis Adetokumbo. At least that's the original name before he went to Greece and had to change it because, you know, the people couldn't pronounce it and they made fun of third name. So Giannis Adetokumbo has scored 50 points in game six of the NBA Finals. Now he plays for the Milwaukee Bucks and now this has represented the Milwaukee Bucks first NBA title since 1971. I mean, this is just amazing what this young man has done. He was fresh off being drafted 15th overall by the Milwaukee Bucks in the 2013 NBA draft. And on Tuesday nights, there were more than 80,000 people crammed in that stadium. And, you know, he put on a spectacular show, a what, what you know, sports analysts are now calling a legendary performance that before now, only Abdul Jabbar and Robertson had ever done this. Um, he basically led the box to an NBA title. And I have a couple of fantastic points that would definitely spin your heads regarding um, Giannis. Right now, we know that he's the only player in NBA history with five All-Star selections. He's the second season player born outside the U.S. to win the MVP um, and finals MVP. He now joins Michael Jordan and Hakim Olajuwon as the only players to win MVP finals. And he's the fifth player born outside the US and that's in Nigeria to win the finals MVP. He's the ninth player to win multiple MVPs and the laurels go on and on and on. So we say congratulations to Adeto Kumbo. Well, I'm not sure why it's now pronounced Adeto Kumbo. Um... Uh, well, Scott should help us understand that. You know, if it's Adeto Kumbo or an Ante or Ante well, I, I, I get that explanation. Uh, said, yeah, you know, when like he relocated, you... people couldn't pronounce that. So I guess maybe it's a way of um, representation of the characters in Greece. So they had to modify that to suit the times and to make people pronounce it easily. Because, see, believe it or not, this racism thing is real. And you have situations where Nigerians have to modify their names so that people can pronounce it better in the countries where they go. We've been pronouncing so Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, however that is, for, for as long as you know, I've, been, I've, I've been aware. You know, and we didn't, nobody had a problem with it. You know? So they, I'm sure they can pronounce that. That's the more. racism we're talking about. Uh, well, um, well, anyway, uh, moving away from his name. Congratulations to him and the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, we spoke about basketball yesterday and, you know, how much we probably need to, you know, sh you know uh, sh move away from, move the, away focus from the, the focus on football, you know, and, you know, see what we can actually achieve with basketball. Um, we're talking about him today, um, and I'm sure that this is all because of people like Hakim Olajuwon who paved the way, yes. you know, for Nigerians in the NBA. People you know, that being, even, um, um, you know, um, what's his name, the, 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 the guy who unfortunately passed last year. Um, the basketball Kobe player, Brian. Kobe Bryant, you know, even mentioned how much he looked up to him. So, yes, we do have Nigerians blazing trails across absolutely. sectors. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Hakim, I think, played from 84 to 2002. And he was one person that a lot of people were proud of, you know, back here in Nigeria. We didn't, um, you know, watch that much basketball, you know. But any time that the NBA was mentioned, there was always a reminder that there is a Nigerian called Hakim um, playing. Um, so, um, congratulations to him. He, he still has a, you know, a pretty long career to go. Um, he has broken a couple of records with regards even signing. He, he, he currently earns one of the highest in the NBA. Mm -hmm. um, and he's taken away the spotlight from the likes of LeBron James and, um, and the other, you know, light-skinned guy. Um, so congratulations to him and their family. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of, you know, what they've been able to achieve. 
Um, and this really, once again, is the level of success that you will achieve when you have a system that supports you, um, a sports ministry that supports you, and, you know, a, a, in an environment that really, really supports your, your dream and your goals and all of that. I'm sure that there's going to be more Nigerian parents thinking now that maybe my child isn't good for football. Let's, you know, look Try into basketball. basketball. Yeah. You know, maybe my child is, isn't meant to be a doctor or <laughs> a lawyer all. or engineer <laughs> after all, you know, or a broadcaster. Maybe they should be footballers. Maybe they should be basketballers. Just sportsmen, generally. Yes, absolutely. The, the good thing about um, Gianni Adetokumbo right now is that he's the most outstanding player of the just-ended NBA season. And he's one of the Nigerians who would also be playing for Nigeria at the Olympics. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic news. Congratulations. Yeah. But the sad thing about the Olympics, I mentioned this yesterday, the organizers of the Olympic Games have not ruled out cancelling the games last minute because I told you about um, a COVID young era. American who yeah. came down with COVID-19 and how that might affect the game. So we just might get a surprise. It wouldn't be a surprise to me because it's something I've expected and they have said it too that you should not rule out any last minute changes that they could just cancel because they are taking health precautions very seriously and are putting the health and lives of all athletes and possibly fans, you know, first before even the games. But what would then happen to all the sponsors, people who've bought broadcast rights and, and all of that? And the amount of billions of dollars oh, that have gone man, into that. We'll, we'll see how it goes. You know, if, if it has to be postponed, it will be postponed. If it has to be cancelled, then it will be cancelled. But I doubt that that will happen. I think they're going to consider a lot of things and rather they would, um, you know, put in more precautions. Um, they would maybe reduce the amount of people that are going to be allowed to watch games mm -hmm. and some of all of that. Yes. Um, instead of outrightly cancelling it. Because this is, you know, it's already been delayed, you know, way beyond um, we, what we had imagined. Anyway. You mentioned the word billions of dollars a few minutes ago, and it just reminds me of our next top trending story. It's about Jeff Bezos, the world's richest man. Went to space yesterday. It was a Tuesday morning. Um, some, some stations are reporting 10 minutes. Some are reporting 11 minutes. But between 10 to 11 minutes, joyride from Earth to the Kamen Line. Now, that Kamen Line is the internationally recognized boundary that, you know, where Earth ends and where space begins. So Jeff Bezos went on a ride out of space. He was there with an 18-year-old German teenager, um, Oliver Damon. And... A bit of a story regarding Oliver. Um, the story is that, you know, people had bid to um, basically follow um, Jeff Bezos out of space. And from about 159 countries, thousands of people, you know, put in a bid to, you know, go out of space. And um, we don't really know just how much, you know, just how much, you know, was paid for this. Because definitely um, Oliver's father, um, what CNN is reporting, definitely paid um, the ticket. The man is, is a rich investor, paid for that spot for his son to be on that flight with Jeff Bezos. There was also, you know, Jeff Bezos didn't go alone. He went with his brother as well. He did announce he would be going with his brother. He also went with the 82-year-old pilot. So basically, this flight saw the oldest person to go out of space, the 82-year-old pilot, and the youngest person to go out of space, and that's the 18-year-old recent high school graduate named Oliver Damon. Now, um, you asked me um, behind the scenes, why exactly is Jeff Bezos going to space? And lots of people definitely have that question on their minds. So um, we know that when Jeff Bezos founded um, Blue Origin, this his space expedition um, in the year 2000, just about six, eight years after he founded Amazon, he said he wanted to make space tourism. He wanted to basically um, break the frontiers of space tourism and make it affordable for people to go out of space, to have tours, to just, you know, just explore what exactly is out there beyond the world as we know it. So um, that's exactly what happened yesterday, that 10-minute joyride to the Kamen Line and back. But Osawagi, would you love to take a tour out of space? Absolutely. Um, obviously you... can't afford it. Um, you it know, can and, you know, pretty, same thing with, you know, another <laughs> 6.9 billion people, you know, plus who also can't afford it. But... <laughs> um, definitely, yes, you know, for, for 11 minutes. I think all of this, you know, happened in about 30 minutes and he was back um, on Earth. Um, there's also been people who laughed at the shape of the space. Yes, craft. and said, oh, what inspired exactly. that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there is that. But other things, you know, first of all, you know, like you mentioned, he is something that he had um, had as a dream since the year 2000 um, and, you know, continued to, um, continuously worked until he was, he was able to achieve it yesterday. 
Um, there's another part where you know it seemed like a an ego thing with himself and Richard Branson. Brand, yes, was Branson, do it first, yes. You know, and uh, <laughs> Richard Branson did you know get to achieve that first, uh, going to space and back. Um, there's also been criticism, you know, about how much this has cost. You know, the, the rumors that it may have cost you know uh, uh, potential um, um, passengers, you know, about thirty million dollars, you know, or, or more or less. Um, but you know, it cost about a, one, more than one billion dollars, you know, to eventually pull this off. Um, and there has been criticism concerning that from you know the American people who are saying you know that's a lot of uh, you know Amazon you know money that's a lot of you know taxpayers um, money. He went on to thank to thank Amazon um, buyers and clients to yeah. say oh you paid for um, my for my trip thank and, you and it would take you know <laughs> you know thousands of you know Americans uh, you know who, who, you know to put that together to be able to make that joy ride and so it seemed like it was just wasting money uh, going to space for absolutely nothing because I don't know what he has achieved going there and coming back you know you didn't bring back water or anything. Um, Another thing, you know, people also criticized was the uh, uh, CO2 emissions, you know, that, um, you know, went off yesterday simply because of that spacecraft. So it's mm. the conversations have been, you know, in different directions. There's also people who have said, you know, you, you spend this much money to go to, go to space mm -hmm. and yet you pay the least taxes amongst, you know, thousands of Amer millions of Americans, you know, who have been working for so, so long and pay heavy taxes mm -hmm. um, simply because you own Amazon. You know, you don't pay taxes and yet you're burning and wasting money like this. Um, but it is his dream, he can afford it, so yes, he can absolutely go to space if he mm. wants to go under the earth and see what's also beneath there, he can do that. You know, there's still a lot of, you know, underwater exploration that needs to be done. Mm. Um, so maybe, yeah, somebody should try that next time. I wouldn't see it as wasting money. I don't, I wouldn't see it that way because in the world we're in, everything is defined by innovation, you know. If we never had that first trip to space, so I don't think lots of the satellite images, lots of advancements in, you know, aviation and all of that, you know, we'll, we would begin to talk about that. So I think it's great for people to push the frontiers, see what exactly is out there. If you have the resources to go ahead and make that push, you know, I, we should support that. I mean, well, after all, it's his money. He didn't steal absolutely. people's money to do that. So I would never criticize Jeff Bezos for, you know, taking that step. Well, Americans, you know, have the right to say what they feel, you know, about this. There's those who celebrate him, you know, and say, yes, you know, I would like to also do this someday. There's those who would say, why are you wasting money? You know, if it's about discovering what's in space, NASA has been doing that for decades, you know, what are you going to do there? Um, he never went there to Bezos, discover anything. Professor, you know, it was, you know, like he said, I, I am not Jeff Bezos' spokesman, um, but what he said is that, you know, they're basically trying to do space tourism. And, you know, if they go on and make advancements into this, definitely people who can afford it, like Oliver Damon's father, who could afford it, would be able to go to space. You know, people people do things, people do skydiving. People, what, what exactly do they achieve? It's for the thrill and the fun of it. If they can afford it, I mean, why not? And, and if they're not hurting anybody. Way to go. All okay. right, we'll take a short break. When we come back, um, Demola Kimbala will be joining us this morning. It's a Wednesday, and he will be uh, going through the papers with us to see what major stories have made the headlines this morning. Stay with us.